All right, how are you guys doing today? There was a ton going on over inside of Ukraine, like a ton going on with the, the Ukrainian offensive that is now taking place, and it's been gaining a bit of steam, and it's forcing the Russian government to literally claim that they're just moving their men east and not actually retreating. But I want to throw this out there. For anyone that knows anybody, or might, maybe yourself, who is looking for real estate inside North Dallas area, like North Texas, uh, you guys should actually hit up my wife. Uh, well, I usually have sponsors for these episodes, but we, we, these, we don't have one. And if you guys are looking for land or any type of real estate, hey, hit her up. I'll put her stuff in the top of the description. Like, I usually have sponsors for these episodes, but because YouTube isn't really a fan of monetizing them, that's why we do it. They, they just, they're just not really a fan of it. So I thought I'd mention this. We don't have one. So if you guys want to hit her up, just uh, please do. Actually, hit her up. Yeah. Send her a message. Just be professional about it. Please don't send her anything crazy. Anybody in the North Dallas area or just North Texas region looking for land, houses, real estate of any sort, just send her over an email. Yeah, just don't send her creepy stuff or photos or weird texts. Just keep it professional. That's all I ask. So that's pretty much that. Um, anyway, most of y'all know what's currently going on inside of Ukraine. So I'm not going to beat around the bush not too much. Just going to lay it out there. The Russians are currently getting their teeth kicked in. And what I mean by that, I, I literally mean like, like full on heel to the front facial area. Just douche. Okay. And it's so much so that that national TV, the, the men that are on there, they're struggling with the fact that they cannot fathom why this is currently happening. Мужество нашим воинам, которые сейчас действительно занимаются очень важным делом и сопротивляются громадной орде, подготовленной на Западе, по-другому и не скажешь. Конечно, как вы сами понимаете, ночь тревожная, и я жду, как вы все, отчетов. Там все тяжело, все понятно. Но и не могу не быть тяжело. Это специальная военная операция. Гибнут люди. Это, ну, мы же с вами все понимаем. Это серьезная, тяжелая ситуация. Серьезная и тяжелая. В ВСУ пошли в наступление. В результате тяжелых боев есть информация, что... Российские подразделения все-таки покинули Балаклею. Бойцы Росгвардии организованно вышли из города через коридор на восточной окраине. В наступление на Харьковском направлении ВСУ бросило подготовленное в Британии части. Новости тревожные, информация противоречивая. Украинцы празднуют, отмечают победу. Были выложены в социальных сетях у Зеленского лично кадры украинского флага над Балаклеей. Что на самом деле, что с Балаклеей, что с Шевченкова, что вам известно? I mean, I can tell you guys exactly why. Uh, what's happened inside this town? It, you lost it. Like, that's literally what happened. It's, that's, that's, that's literally it. Добрый день, Ольга. Ну, если честно, я просто в неведении о том, что столицей России была Балаклея, и ее украинские подразделения в мое отсутствие столицу России перенесли в Купянск, то есть в Балаклею, и вот сейчас там празднуют непонятно что. Вот, по сути своей, ни Балаклея, ни Купинск не имеют никакого-то сверхъестественного там какого-то значения для союзнических and may I remind this gentleman that Kupiansk is a big target due to the fact that it is literally the logistical hub for the northeastern front. This is the northeastern side of the country, and won't, no one can deny this. Like, no one can deny this, and it's very big. It's a very big deal. You cannot downplay the fact that they're literally taking it back almost triple in two days what Russia has been able to do over two months. Копинск, безусловно, для ВСУ представляет собой лакомую цель, поскольку это, это центр пересечения и железнодорожных, и шоссейных дорог. Это тыловая база, которая снабжает материальными средствами практически всю нашу группировку, которая расположена в западной реке Северский Донец. Поэтому цена вопроса велика. Okay, well, this guy and myself apparently agree with each other with how strategically important Купьянск is. Like it is extremely important. Удар вооруженными силами Украины наносится южнее. То есть рассуждать на тему того, что этот населенный пункт не является стратегическим важным, ничего страшного, работаем дальше, не совсем было бы корректно. Да, безусловно, это не совсем корректно. Это он имеет исключительно важное значение для снабжения всей нашей группировки войск, действующих в этом районе. Тревожно, все волнуются, жутко. 
переживают, не допускаем паники, верим, надеемся, желаем успехов нашим военным. Мне представляется абсолютно верным, что Российская Федерация постепенно отходит от общепринятых подходов в отношении Северной Кореи и налаживает отношения с этой страной. Очевидно, что нам необходимо формировать, как сказали бы в советские годы, антиимпериалистический фронт, потому что против России действует коалиция из 53 государств. Что Конечно. с нами сейчас делает Запад? Запад нам говорит, значит, мы придем полностью вот до зубов вооружены всем, а ты приходи голый. А, ты не хочешь приходить голым, значит, ты слаба. Да все надо брать. Надо создавать им проблемы, надо использовать как раз те типы вооружений, которые они не понимают, как на них реагируют. В том числе и севернокорейские, да любые. Но я, честно говоря, не очень понимаю, пока, как мы эту битву ведем. Вот я смотрю, что сейчас происходит под Харьковом. Я не собираюсь там даваться в панику, дождемся, что скажет Министерство обороны. And I'm also so glad that he brought this up, actually, because you guys know we actually uh, get to listen to the defense minister's update here, in a, in a, and we're going to be sharing here in a few minutes. But I feel like a lot of you guys have been watching this channel for months. Get some enjoyment of hearing these people who have been saying crazy things for months. I mean, you're, you're enjoying listening to them sweat just a tad bit. I mean, even the commentators on Russia's biggest sports channel are having to actually comment on it and relay the message that everything will be all right and a praise for the men to hold out an Izium. Дело в том, что из Изюма самая разная информация поступает. Вот последний там, час, полтора, и в том числе во время нашего эфира. Я просто хот... я, я не, не, невозможно что-то сейчас комментировать, да, мы не знаем какой-то официальной информации. Я просто хотел э, сказать, чтобы ну, все, кто верующий, наверное, чтобы молились за наших парней, я в том числе, это э, ну, нет слов, просто молились за то, чтобы держались за наших мужчин, которые там сейчас находятся. И победа обязательно будет за нами. Жизнь все расставит по своим местам. Это была программа «Есть тема». Меня зовут Антон Анисимов. Все пока. Now, I don't want to burst this bubble or anything, but if, if, you, if you didn't know this already, they, they've actually are starting to have to fully retreat out there, which we'll talk about here in a second. Now, if you've been paying attention, which a lot of people have, because that's what you guys are listening to this, this, this channel for, you'll notice that there's literally new reports coming out every single hour inside the Kharkiv region when it comes to how many towns have been liberated, which ones they are, and new areas the Russians have literally just left. Like, they keep leaving a lot of their equipment behind and they're running for the hills. And it's honestly seeming more to me Like we are seeing the complete collapse of the Russian forces inside of this region as a whole. And one might ask, what will the Russians do in an attempt to actually stop this from happening? We've talked about this before in like literally months ago. I feel like I've talked about this. But you can see here in a minute, the Russian military has just about ran out of all their options in regard to just throwing random new forces into this area in an attempt to stop the offensive. They couldn't even mobilize if they had to new troops to help because it would take too long for one. And this take too long to get going, that is. And the Ukrainians are moving way too fast for that as of right now. Like, they could not shift men from Russia over to this area fast enough to stop it. It's just not going to happen. They can't shift men from the east over to this area because they're going to lose that area in the east. So they just it's just not physically possible. They can't bring them down from Kupiansk. And they, well, they're already in Kupiansk, excuse me. Uh, Vovchansk. They can't bring them down from Vovchansk because right now I'm actually hearing, which we'll talk about in a second as well, that Vovchansk may also... Be going away. I don't really know. But for all the people who have been saying that they actually might be using tactical nukes or bigger munitions during this conflict, this could be the time. I just want to keep that in mind as we go about in this video in, in next and previous or next to me in late in ones later on down the road. But I've said this before. When you're hurt and you're crippled in a corner, this would be the only time that I could possibly see them doing something crazy like this. We all know Putin just cannot accept defeat as a whole. For one, optics to his nation, his civilian population is not going to allow the Russians. It's not what they had, not how they think they are not going to lose this war. And it's not even a war, it's a special military operation still. Which brings me back to my point. And I've said a few separate times they're going to have to mobilize, which means he's going to have to declare war, which means that would actually shift a lot of stuff. But are they going to do that? But anyway, as I promised, here is the full statement for the Russian Defense Ministry himself. Для достижения заявленных целей специальной военной операции по освобождению Донбасса принято решение перегруппировать российские войска, находящиеся в районах Балаклея и Изюма, для наращивания усилий на Донецком направлении. С этой целью в течение трех суток проведена операция по свертыванию и организованной переброске изюмско балаклейской группировки войск на территорию Донецкой Народной Республики. В ходе этой операции проведен ряд отвлекающих и демонстрационных мероприятий с обозначением реальных действий войск. В целях недопущения ущерба российским войскам по противнику наносилось мощное огневое поражение с применением авиации, ракетных войск и артиллерии. За трое суток уничтожено более 2000 украинских и иностранных боевиков. 
а также свыше 100 единиц бронетехники и артиллерии. And I'm going to say this right now. If this were to be true, why are we seeing so much of their equipment left behind in the woods in so many failed river crossings by abandoned BMPs? I mean, I recall saying this many, many times. Why are the Russians maintaining the ground inside of Izium in the first place? If they're not getting anywhere, then they haven't for months. If this, a, if this is a real thing that he's talking about, they should have done this two months ago when it was completely stalled out. And I know I've said this. Why are they in this area? They have a lump of men, like a cancerous lump of men sitting right here doing nothing except taking casualties and taking up supplies. Why are they there? They should have moved them out months ago when they were stalled out and they were stretched so thin down inside this region. I just don't really see what the real plan is, which brings me back to my original reason or my original point I said a few minutes ago about the drastic measures we're going to see Putin take since he's now backed into a corner. Like when you have... The men that we saw and the women that we saw on Russian state TV talking the way they are, that optic is being put out to the, the Russian civilization, like the, the Russian civilians, excuse me. That's what they're seeing. Like, I don't know. Anyway, honestly, if you were playing this out, you wouldn't be seeing as many videos like this. And that's what I'm talking about. These weren't destroyed vehicles. Those were literally just left behind. They're still in working order. Like, if, if, if it was planned out, they'd all be loaded up on trucks. They would have been, like, okay, for one, Kupiansk has a rail station there. They could have shifted all this up to Valyuki inside of Russia, and they would have been good, right? If this was planned, I don't know. Just, just throwing it out there. We also have visual confirmation that Ukrainian high Mars are inside of Kharkiv, by the way, doing some work. <laughs> Работа Хаймерс. Ось тигри. Бетери. Бехи. Все, що хоче. Работа розвідки нормальна. І все згоріло. Бо у підарі все буде горіти. Yeah. Those, those things don't mess around one bit. Like, look at that. That's literally an entire forward operating base of the Russian military destroyed by a HIMARS. And this is some of the areas that's being liberated right now by the Ukrainians as they push through. And I know we've been focusing, for the most part on this episode, about the Ukrainians that have been pushing towards Izium, but I also believe that they've now pushed an element north. Yes, north. And this is, talks about Vovchansk. I think there is a chance that the Russians are retreating out of Vovchansk. I'll show you guys here in the map here in a second. Now, I'm only saying this because I believe the occupation authorities inside of this area have stated that the forces, the Russian forces, have temporarily left the city, and they're leaving the city right now. And they said they're going to be back one day. I don't even know what that really means. But I guess we're going to have to wait another day to, to see what really goes on there. So we're going to go over to mapping. A lot's been going on. A lot of ground's been taken. I've had to get the eraser pen out a lot. Just get after it. And before we get into it, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I believe I believe the Russian units inside of Lyman are currently retreating from Lyman and Severe Taurus. Uh, the current situation in Lyman, or just going to be Izium, is pretty uh, difficult to track. But I'm fairly certain the Russians inside this area are trying to get out here as fast as they humanly can. I'm going to show you guys a map from yesterday. So right now, this is the map from yesterday. Okay, here is the map of the front lines looked like inside this area. This is where they were sitting as of 24 hours ago. Okay, this this is this was pretty significant at the time. Remember, there was a little pocket. I just want you guys to notice what's going on here. This is Kupiansk. All right, so I'm going to shift over to the other map here in a second. This is pretty significant. You're going to see about this much get taken out. Actually, a little more than that, excuse me, more like this. All this is all going to be taken out here in a second. Now, this is the only route, so keep this in mind. Here's O-Skill. This is going to be the only route they have because this bridge is not, not going to be able to use, and neither is this one and this one. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the new map. It's, it's pretty crazy. Now, here is the map. This is literally 24 hours later. Here's the bridges I'm talking about. They're not going to be able to use any of these, of course, to get their men across. This is going to be the only one, this little tiny choke point right here. So the Ukrainian counteroffensive has actually completely pushed the Russians all the way back to the northern side of Kupiansk, which is just north of here. Oh, before that, let's actually switch up to Vochansk. So here's Vochansk right here. This, this right here is the one I'm talking about. I've heard that Russians are retreating. Don't really know what's going on up there, but just want to let you guys know. I have, I've had these things, these labeled, these gray circles right here. I've had them labeled as, as significant cities that they, if they were to be able to take them back, it would, well... We kind of ruined this entire Kharkiv front, which that's what they're pushing towards. And Kupiansk being the main logistical hub. Now, 
The Russians are on the northern side of Kupiansk right now on the opposite side of the river that they've been pushed all the way back. I don't know if Kupiansk itself, as I'm making this video, has been liberated, but I believe I could see this happening at the current rate in the next couple days. Like it could all push all the way back. I could, I mean, in the next 12 hours, it could be taken. I have no idea. There are confirmed reports that we've seen destruction. That is the HIMARS that are working inside of this area is inside of Kupiansk, by the way, just so you guys are aware. And they've been, they've been, it's going to be adding a lot of pressure to already panicked and like retreating Russians. And we have visual confirmation of 20 plus villages being liberated in the last 12 hours alone. So remember this thing had a pocket here. And they were kind of like this. They literally have pushed down and taken back all this in the last 12 hours. That's nuts. That's the largest land grab we've seen by the Ukrainians this entire war. Like the Ukrainian conflict, or excuse me, the Ukrainian military currently has the ability to target the only road leading in and out of the Izium for the Russians. That's literally the only one that they can get in and out is right out of Oskil, right here. I'm going to go ahead and erase it so you guys can see. So Oskil, that road did you guys see right here? That's their only way in and out right now. They have pressure coming on from all different angles. The artillery has been doing work on this main route, which is going to make it almost impossible for the Russians to, or, or artillery that is, to get in and out, and the armor to get in and out to actually join the fighting that is taking place inside of Izium. Like the best bet, and the only bet right now for the Russians is to actually physically retreat so they don't sustain as many casualties as they're going to. That's it. All the men in this area, they need to figure out a way to filter themselves down and then back across this way. They have to. And now they might be able to hold this line on the Oskil River that goes all the way up, but I highly doubt it right now. If from what I'm seeing, from what I'm seeing, this they're retreating out of Sevitatorsk right there, and then here's Lyman as well. And that's what I'm saying. I think we might be seeing the complete collapse right now with the Russian military inside the northern area. I, I, I'm being honest with you guys. Like the Russians are currently taking it from three separate sides, just in Izium alone. I don't know. I've been chewing on something as well over the last 24 hours or so. I'm going to run this past y'all. Tell me what you think. Is there any chance the Ukrainian military may have caused all the issues they've done down inside of Kyrgyzstan, like destroying ammunition depots, uh, taking out the bridges, starting this big offensive push? Like, do you think the main goal is possibly was to force the Russians to then shift their reserves over to Kyrgyzstan, which then they can kick off this Kharkiv offensive? I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I just want to throw it out there because this could be a possibility, right? Like, the Russians literally have no resources right now, and, like, anywhere around here. Like whatsoever, reserves wise, ammo wise, anything, and and they clearly weren't wanting to leave this area, or they wouldn't have had as much as their equipment just being left behind. I've said this over and over again. Like the Ukrainians, if they're able to take back Kupiansk and Izium in weeks' time, that would be personally, I believe, that's going to be the greatest military accomplishment in war since World War II. Like I 100, I I, I believe that because Kupiansk is that powerful to the northeastern side of this country, and it'll be I. I would, I don't know, I would argue with somebody quite heavily on that just due to the fact, if you guys look, see this dotted line, that is the train railway that runs from Kupiansk to Valyuki. So that's pretty significant. You know how much more stuff you can put on a train when it comes to the supplies? Like if the Russians do lose Kupiansk, they're going to have to rely on most of the reinforcement supplies coming in from the eastern side of, of Lischansk, which is going to be over here. See this main black route I've actually have drawn? That's where they're going to have to go into. Like it's going to be very difficult to, to get supplies into this, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think we're just seeing the collapse inside this area. Now my question is, are the Ukrainians going to sp spread themselves so thin or are they going to push through, reconsolidate, regroup, and then push through, hold, push? That's what they should be doing. I would assume that's where they're going to be. They've been doing so well right now. That's probably what they're going to do. I don't think they're going to make this mass push like the Russians did and then create like gaps in their security and gaps in their defensive line where they can't actually hold. So speaking about list chance, by the way, which is down over here. I've seen reports that the residents inside the city have actually been seeing the, the armed forces of the Ukrainian military like on the outskirts of the city, which is a possibility because they're really not that far. But partisans inside the city of Krim Krimina right here, okay, they've apparently raised the Ukrainian flag over the city itself, and it's been said that they've been seeing large swaths, I guess you say, or supplies, supply routes, or excuse me, not supply routes, uh, convoys of Russians actually leaving the city like in large chunks. Like That's... Pretty crazy. So if, they, if they're pulling out of this area too, they're pulling back north. What is, are they going to hold list chance? Because remember list chance is, I don't know. As I'm looking at this, list chance itself is on a hill. Severe desk itself is in the low ground. I don't really know. Are they going to pull out and then just hold severe desk? Or is that what they're going to attempt to do? I don't know. 
I don't know. This has been the main focus. Now, honestly, there hasn't been much going on in the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the country as of right now, but the main focus is going to be in Kharkiv. So bear with me. I will see you guys tomorrow. I do love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, another update will be out here tomorrow. We'll see what goes on and what progress has been made. I'm out.